What's up, y'all? I wanted to make this video for a long time and done is better than perfect, right? The lighting might not be great. Just got done filming some stuff. I wanted to talk about my journey with performance enhancing drugs. It's been a small journey, but I still think it's important to be authentic about this stuff because there's so many people <laughs> in every industry from jujitsu to powerlifting to bodybuilding that don't talk about what they've used and, and what they've done. But furthermore, I want people to know that there are risks involved. As most of you know, I started out in the online world in 2008, like when the smartphone came about as all natural KO. That's when I got into bodybuilding properly and I got into the wrestling session scene in all natural KO. I went by KO, but that was my email handle. That was my website. I had a blog and I was very proud of the fact that I didn't touch performance enhancing drugs. So I was 28, maybe 27 when I started and I wanted to be all natural in a sense with my tits, right? Because I always thought it was super bizarre seeing bodybuilders, female bodybuilders with giant bolt-on tits. I was like, what? This is wild. They look like plungers. What's going on? Right? So all natural tits and embrace not having any and not using performance enhancing drugs. Also, I am in recovery. I am a recovered alcoholic and addict, and I've always been afraid of, you know, getting too excited about them and losing my femininity. So to me, femininity is incredibly important. I love being female and I wouldn't want to trade that for anything in the world. So I have great genetics. I've been working out since I was 17. I played a lot of sports growing up, you know, total tomboy, even though we're kind of losing that now, which is going to be a whole nother video. So stick around. But, you know, I got into this and many years passed. So it wasn't until 2015, right? So uh, almost a decade later, when I was 35, I did my last show which was a physique show prior to that that i did a handful of bodybuilding shows and i placed horribly because i wouldn't use any performance enhancing drugs no clenbuterol no anything now prior to 2015 there were there was like a two-week period i tried anavar in 2012 and i broke out and i was like oh ha -ha, i can't deal with this i don't like having pimples on my face. Nope, I'm good. And I, I quickly stopped that. Then there was a time, I think in 2013 or 14, I took like a shot of testosterone for my libido. Oh my God. It was insane. I was in the back of the cab, like, ah! it was crazy. It was crazy. I was like, is this how men feel? I want to feel like this all the time. But again, you know, to too concerned about what might come and so forth. So 2015, I did a physique show and I thought, right, if I'm going to do this, I'm going to do it properly and found a coach and they put all sorts of stuff in me from L-carnitine, shooting it liquid form. You'd get it from a horse store uh, and taking um, estrogen blockers, taking primabolin, and I believe I was taking Anavar. So it wasn't a ton of Prima Bolin, right? But enough for me to be taking something. And then as well as Clenbuterol. And Clenbuterol made me almost psychotic. Like I became real obsessive compulsive. I would be driving to the gym and I'd say, oh my God, I'm so scared. Someone's gonna hit me. And this is the best that I've ever looked in my life and I'm gonna lose everything. It was really strange. I got these really strange thoughts. So I want to say four months of cycling on stuff. I competed, you know, I didn't notice a huge 
a boost in my strength because Prima Bolin kind of hardens the muscles and gets you more defined, but it's not androgenic like testosterone and or taking Trimbolin. I don't know a lot about steroids. Uh, Deca, Tren, right? I know Sussatin. I never uh, wanted to go that route. So I, I definitely put on some some size, but it didn't increase my strength capacity, which was kind of annoying, right? I competed and even though I looked great because I was in physique, I was placed almost close to last because they wanted to make a statement for other physique com competitors that, you know, it was more of a shredded look and they didn't want to see bodybuilder type frames. So after that, I was like, fuck it, that's, that's enough for me, I'm done. Fast forward a year and a half, and I was diagnosed with Graves' disease. And Graves' disease has absolutely ruined my life. It has interrupted my sleep, first and foremost. I go through spells where I don't sleep for two months at a time. You know, my hair started thinning, falling out. You're irritable, anxious. Um, tolerance. I have no tolerance to cold, but I had developed an autoimmune disease in 2013 called Raynaud's disease, where you lose circulation in your hands and feet, and it's incredibly painful. And they say that when you develop one autoimmune disease, you'll develop another every seven years until you address the problem. They also say that Graves' disease can be caused from drug use. Right, I was a nine year methamphetamine user, two years of narcotics, and of course, during that whole time, drinking alcohol. So whether it was triggered by that, you know, it might be hereditary. I've got a great grandmother that had a goiters of a cousin in the family that has Graves disease and it's, you know, affected his eyes. So whether or not it's hereditary uh, drug use from my younger days, or if it was from taking steroids or the L-carnitine, right? Uh, I don't know. Also, I had breast implants put in when I was going to compete. I was told by a judge in one of my earlier shows that I needed to balance out my top half with my lower half because my legs were so big. So that stuck in my mind. And that's when I was really, you know, was all natural and all about it. And then I actually started getting quite lean and, you know, I had a, a very boyish haircut in 2013, 2014. And I thought, oh, well, maybe titties will give me some femininity. And I have a sinking suspicion that the Graves disease was caused by the breast implants, which I've obviously now had removed. So whether it was the breast implants, you know, the cycle that I did, uh, hereditary, I don't know. But I want people to know that, you know, there are risks involved when you put anything in your body that's not meant to be there. So after that, I think I took like a cycle of Anavar when I was in Thailand, because you can walk into a pharmacy and buy that shit there. Uh, which would have been, you know, a couple of months worth. But again, never really had huge gains from it. And then I got diagnosed with Graves' disease and was incredibly sick. I lost 20 pounds of muscle. My voice then changed as well. It got a lot raspier and deeper, and funnily enough. That caused me to not work out for almost a year and a half. I mean, I worked out, but not like my normal beast mode workout. 2019 to 2021, I got back into CrossFit and I love CrossFit, love it. And kept me thick and strong and conditioned. And then I injured my arm, arm wrestling, tore my labrum. I was having a bout of insomnia where I didn't sleep for two months. And this was the end of 2021. So the start of 2022, I didn't sleep all of January and part of February. I slept like three hours a night and I started hallucinating. I started losing my mind, lost a ton of weight. I mean, it was, shit was crazy. Graves disease 
is an autoimmune condition of your thyroid. Most women, their thyroid slows down and it's hypothyroidism. For me, I have hyperthyroidism where it speeds up. So again, muscle wastage, you're shaking. I believe my thyroid relapsed because I'd get the thyroid checked and it would almost be in range, but I always forgot to check the TSH antibodies, which are indicative to Graves' disease. So I got back and that's when I did slap fighting. And I came back from, you know, two months of not sleeping. I was a shell of a woman. I did the slap fighting with my friend and I thought we agreed to sell it. And certainly that's not how it went down. You know, I made sure I slapped her on the cheek because I don't like to break all the rules. And of course, as a lot of you know, I got knocked out. <laughs> And after that happened, you know, I really felt demolished. Like I thought, man, my shoulder, right? Cause I had torn my labrum. And so I slapped her with my left, even though I'm right handed. And I thought, you know what, fuck it. I'm going to do another cycle. So I did another cycle of Primo and that lasted for, I don't know, three months. I wanted maybe two months. And I did, I, I put some more size on, but again, it was a, a relatively small amount. And Primabolin is a low androgenic um, performance enhancing drug. So it's, it's safer for women. That was really about it. That's been my journey. There's a lot of people, right, that are looking at hormone replacement therapy and it's so important to know that this stuff changes you. It changes your brain chemistry. It changes your emotions. I can't imagine being on it in high doses for a long period of time. I've had friends, people close in my life who have had absolute meltdowns. And you don't realize it until later. We are like, oh my gosh, that was because of the steroids. Like you were acting insane. So it's... It's alarming to me. I've seen endocrinologists all over the world. I have two in Australia, one in Singapore, one here in the US, two functional medicine doctors. And endocrinologists specialize in your hormones and your thyroid. Everybody has something different to say. Couldn't like quite figure out what the best thing is to do. There's so much care that needs to be put into hormone replacement therapy. And then I went to a clinic because I'm in perimenopause. So you add that on top of it and drastic changes can happen to women in perimenopause, primarily in our progesterone. It drops significantly when we hit the age of 35, give or take. And I was about 37 when I hit perimenopause. So I've got these dual symptoms of perimenopause as well as Graves' disease, which is, which is it? Which is keeping me up, you know? And nobody could give me an answer. Nobody could solve my issue. I've done gut healing protocols, you know, cleanses, medical medium, desperate to find something. I've done all these different protocols for functional medicine, like Lyme's disease, uh, mold, toxicity, heavy metals, detoxing that out of your body. Girls like in CrossFit, I don't actually know about M WMMA, but they're taking some kind of primarily Anavar. Winstrol is another oral pill, but a, a lot of girls will take Anavar. So, you know, I think it's important that people know that there's there's some benefit to it, right? People that take gear have to work harder. You don't just take it and shit happens to you. You know what I'm saying? Like you've got to put in the work. And generally people that mess with PEDs are really stringent, hyper-disciplined, focused, driven, and that's outstanding, right? But again, there are consequences and there are emotional breakages in in your praying when you're putting something else in. So it's important to know that. And furthermore, I don't believe anybody under the age of 35 should mess with PEDs. 
even though men's testosterone levels have dropped significantly in the past 10 years, even five years, you know, it's super important and we're all so chemically induced by, well, my leggings are PFA free, but we have chemicals and everything from, you know, fake faux leather to the paint, candles, air fresheners, dryer sheets. There's so many hormone disrupting things that we put onto our body and our skin is our biggest organ. Shit just gets straight into there. It's important to know that there are consequences. Just like when I got breast implants, I never knew what breast implant illness was. I didn't know that I could potentially develop an autoimmune disorder. And again, whether that was triggered by drug use or uh, from my younger days or the short cycle, I have no idea. But again, had I thought about the fact that there's a risk and that I could develop an autoimmune disease, wouldn't have done it, wouldn't have touched it. If you're somebody who is considering HRT, especially for transitioning, it, there's a lot to it. And I don't think that the medical community is really giving people all of the information and knowing what kind of psychological impact this can have on your life. So stay safe, consult with coaches, consult with professionals. That's, that's really all I could tell you. Uh, I'll make a follow-up video. I started taking peptides for my ACL. Those keep me awake as well. But there's a lot of research out there on peptides nowadays, so you might want to start there. First of all, get the motivation to get yourself into a position to be stronger. And why do you want to do it? Get clear on your why, because it's a it's a process and you got to be dedicated and know that any small amount can potentially have a negative impact on your life. All right. Love you guys. Let me know if there's anything else you want me to cover. And that's what's up.